Hi, my name is Wes O'Donnell, veteran of both the U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force and managing editor of InMilitary.com. And this is Leadership Lessons from History. This week, JFK and the Cuban Missile Crisis. But first, cue the fancy intro. For 13 days in October of 1962, the world was brought to the brink of nuclear war. On October 14, 1962, an American U-2 spy plane photographed an SS-4 Soviet medium-range ballistic missile being assembled on the island nation of Cuba. Soviet-made medium-range ballistic missiles placed only 90 miles from the coast of Florida gave the Soviets an incredible first strike capability. Kennedy and his team could not allow the Soviets to place nuclear weapons this close to the U.S. sphere of influence, not just for strategic reasons, but for political ones as well. Kennedy was going to have no chance of re-election in 1964 if he didn't stand up in the face of Soviet aggression. For its part, the Soviet Union had just watched the failed invasion of Cuba, now called the Bay of Pigs fiasco, and Premier of the Soviet Union, Nikita Khrushchev, reasoned that by placing nuclear missiles in Cuba, that might deter future U.S. aggression on the island. As a leader, Kennedy and his executive committee were under intense pressure. The Joint Chiefs were attempting to pressure Kennedy into an invasion of the island of Cuba, a full-scale U.S.-led invasion. Kennedy reasoned, though, that a full U.S. invasion would end up killing the Soviet soldiers on the island who were assembling the missiles. Killing Soviet soldiers might have resulted in a full-scale shooting war with the Soviet Union and perhaps nuclear Armageddon. Kennedy rejected the Joint Chiefs invasion. Instead, he kept a more measured approach and decided on a blockade or a quarantine of the island of Cuba by the U.S. Navy to prevent more nuclear weapons from reaching the island. In addition, he set out an ultimatum to Nikita Khrushchev that the missiles that are currently on the island need to be removed immediately. The blockade worked and the Soviet Union and the United States came to an agreement that the United States would never attempt to invade Cuba again and the Soviet Union would remove the missiles from Cuba. Also, Kennedy agreed to the removal of U.S. missiles that were based in Turkey. However, at that point they were obsolete and out of date. Now we can learn several key lessons from Kennedy's handling of the Cuban Missile Crisis that you can use in your everyday life. Namely, keeping calm under pressure. First, stay calm and remain fearless. See the situation as a challenge, not a crisis. Second, focus on the goal and keep it simple. Find order in the chaos and have clarity of thought. Third, learn to deal with ambiguity. Most people don't respond well to the unknowns. Teach yourself to become more adaptable and respond to events objectively rather than emotionally. And finally, delegate what you can. You don't have to control everything. In Kennedy's case, he had his brother, then Attorney General Robert Kennedy, take a note directly over to the Soviet ambassador uh, stating that we were going to remove our missiles from Turkey sealing the deal. All right, leaders, get out there and show the world that you know how to stay calm under pressure. This is Wes O'Donnell with Leadership Lessons from History. See you next week.